Hello everyone and welcome to another Planet Zoo tutorial. Yeah, you guys um, were very active in the last tutorial video and I'm super thankful for it. So again, big, big thanks to you. Uh, I hope I could clarify most of your questions regarding building. Today there's another topic and this is terrain, terrain landscaping. <laughs> so yeah, however, uh, this is something um, so many people requested underneath the construction video and I found this really interesting because I really didn't think about that this could be a thing but in fact if you're not used to 3D modeling or a planet coaster um, it's very very intimidating because it's a very powerful tool. Before we start using it the terrain is down here to the right bottom part of the screen. You just click it and then usually the terrain menu should open. There we go. Um, and you have first of all seven si simple tools to use. Before we use them, let me just quickly ex uh, explain the menu and one specific fact. So the menu shows you several settings you can use. First setting is the intensity, that means how strong the effect is applied. The size is how large the area is which is affected. The scenery lock is pretty interesting. If you want to manipulate the terrain, but you don't want the terrain to go into your buildings you've already made, you wanna de this, uh, uh, you wanna enable this so it doesn't transform into your buildings. This is actually pretty nice if you don't want to make your buildings filled with soil and stuff. Um, surface lock is basically the same. That means you can't just go through a, a certain surface. Um, the paint thing is actually pretty good. Because um, you can choose between sampled, use selected and auto paint. So sampled is basically it's using the texture that's already applied in the area you're just clicking on. The second toggle, use selected, is the one you selected down here in painting. And the auto paint is basically using what the game thinks is best for this kind of option. It mostly uses then uh, for the raising option the first texture and for the sides basically a, a kind of rock texture. Um, but yeah, this is how it is. We, we keep it to uh, oops, we keep it to sampled. And um, first of all, before we use it again, now how does the game operate terrain? The thing is, it is voxel based. That means you can just, to, to keep it simple, because it would be a bit too hard to explain, um, you can imagine having a big, big chunk of clay, right? You've got clay in front of you. And there is one specific mass of clay. You can't really, you know, just magically uh, copy and paste uh, this somewhere. It has to be existing. But what you can do with clay is you can push it, you can pull it, you can use different tools like a knife or something to make it better and you know all these kind of things like you you know in school you potentially have done this and, and worked with clay. This is basically exactly the same way you would do it in Planet Zoo. So you could induce just this here and let's first off start with the pull option. So we just pull it on and you can see what's happening. The terrain just raises. Very simple. We have the push option, which you can imagine goes down. Really simple. We have a flatten do foundation. That means it's um, pretty simple. It's, it's kind of as if you would cut into the clay um, from the position you are. So if I would use it here, you can't see really much happening because it uses the one where I am. But it basically flattens everything to the level and it always takes the level from the middle point you just clicked. So for example, if I go to the top of this little hill here, you can see it flattens everything to the height of this one. Obviously, the control Z and control option uh, like redo and undo also works for terrain. Be a little bit careful with it because uh, it's not really one step. So if you just hold down your mouse button and do an action, it's not in particular um, one step for the game. So sometimes you can't undo everything because terrain is a little bit finicky. Anyways, the fourth tool is a flatten to surface. It actually um, works the same way as the flatten to foundation. The only difference is that it flattens to the angle you are just on. So if you would go to a completely flat zero degree angled area it basically would be exactly the same as flattened to foundation however as soon as you have only one percent of tilt you can see how my overlay just starts to clap uh, clip down here into the little hole so you can go to the angle you want then press and hold and you can see it, it starts making this kind of ramp over here it's very handy to create ramps or like very nice uh, things and I'm gonna build like something like pride rock over here um, so yeah this is done very easy so there's a force option which is kind of shizzle shizzle is um, a little bit harder to explain. Shizzle works a little bit, yeah, well, a, as a chisel with clay, I think it's the best thing to 
kind of um, explain this to you. Uh, for Chisel I would always recommend to go to the smallest or maybe second smallest option available and also try to use less of the intensity. I'm gonna go 30 degrees. And then you can go and just chisel the edges a little bit. So it's very handy if you want to make, um, yeah, kind of more interesting looking, um, yeah, kind of uh, structures and you can just chisel along. Really imagine as if you would use a chisel, you, you have full control over uh, this tool. It's a little bit getting used to and then you can create cool things. Um, so for example, I'm not really happy with how this looks down here. I want to have like the terrain going a bit more in and just tidy this up a little bit more. You can really see how this easily works. So speaking of tidying up, there is one more option over here. This is the smooth tool. So as you can see, there is some kind of edgy stuff down here. You know, it's, it's if you don't want to have this edgy stuff, you might want to do smoothing. And for smoothing, I would also recommend to, you know, just look into which kind of intensity you want to have. I'm gonna bring this to 50%. I think 50% is always a good value. And if we just move it over, you can see the game automatically kind of smooths out the area. It just creates a very smooth transition. Nothing too crazy going on. You can always use this to make things look a bit more natural and yeah, kind of uh, nicer and, and more realistic looking, right? It, it's very easy. It's a very, very easy tool. Um, okay, so we have done six out of seven in this tab. Now, there is a last option, and I call this the lazy button. If you want to make an area look a little bit more rough, like a rocky kind of area or like a valley or whatever, you can use this roughen tool. I'm just going to show it to you how this works. It's just kind of creating the same what we just did but in, on a random basis so you can see i'm just i can't control this it's just happening it kind of uh, raises and uh, lowers down areas like just you know completely randomly it wouldn't create the same over again if you do this over here uh well the sun is actually not really in our favor let's just move it hello can i just move it please um, I think I can't. Okay, I'm, I have no control over weather in this one. Okay, I didn't even know that. Um, yeah, in fact, you can see it's different than it was over here. Let's just redo this because no one needs this manipulated terrain there. So these are the seven options you do have in this tab. There is, however, a new tab which hasn't been existing in Planet Coaster. And I, I really didn't know what to do with it in first, but honestly, this is really cool. Now you have got a shape option. So the cool thing about the shape option is, and now just forget about what I said about the clay chunk. Just imagine you have a clay chunk and you just build something and you kind of, do, you just got rid of some clay, but you didn't want to get rid of it, right? You can actually, in fact, now add clay. And this can be done with these little things over here. So you have basically, it's a little bit back to the times of Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 actually, uh, giving you a bit more control over, uh, yeah, like shapes. The thing is you can actually change the size and we can go to 7.7 seven for example. Oh, let's go to 4.4, four. that makes the thing even more easy. So you can raise and lower this with shift. Holding down shift will raise and lower this and um, holding down control lets you move this on an axis. So this is pretty easy. I don't even know, does this. Oh, you can actually even, oh, this is, aha. Uh -huh. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. I didn't even know that. You can also press X and then use the um, wonderful uh, access tool. This is a huge thing because now you can create very much a lot more precise. So let's say I want to make um, kind of, a, a, let's, let's say an archway out of, uh, out of all of terrain. We can now do this with a cylinder option, for example. We press drag it up a little bit and we just create a column. As you can see, we are just creating a column over here. Pretty cool actually. I didn't know that this happens or uh, works that way. So we can actually do the same over here and just create the same column. And um, yeah, we, we can actually also go in and, and put a sphere in the middle. Oh, right, this looks a bit weird. Um, so, hello, is this, what is going on with this shape? Okay, I think it got stuck. Ah, there we go, back again. Okay, so now you can move it up again and we can increase the size of it. Height four and width also four. So you can see now we have this one uh, in the middle, create this, and you have this wonderful weird looking thing. But it's actually pretty cool because you could never ever do this uh, so precise with these tools. 
Now, combining those tools actually makes you really the king of terraforming, because now we can just go in and smooth out the corners to make it perfectly integrated into your area. So just go very carefully around the corners. Here we go. Very easy indeed. And basically, that's it. You can also, if you want to be even more crazy and more precise, just take the smallest step available, also decrease this one. You can just go in and smooth these transitions over here very carefully <coughs> to make it actually even better looking. Sometimes you need to increase uh, the little tool a bit to kind of also handle these corners like so. There we go. Um, and you can see it's even better than the other side. So very cool indeed. So the last bit we need to do about terraforming obviously is terra painting. You can see we have now 10, actually in fact 9 textures per map because this is basically auto paint. Um, always gives it the, the, the default texture back. So if I use the rock smooth over here for example, or the rock smooth and then I use the auto paint, it basically goes back to what it was before. So um, again, the same thing happens over here. You have a size option and you have an intensity option. Um, you can actually mix and match this very much. But what's really cool though, this time they added something that is really dope and that's the sand, uh, the uh, one meter option. It kind of existed in Planet Coaster, but not in this kind of way. So you can actually finally use it. So it works. So you can finally draw more or less like little very, very fine lines. It's actually working pretty okay. Not perfectly fine, but it's doing okay. You can even go in and, you know, as soon as I do two meters, you can see it's, it's just way bigger and you don't really have that much control over it. I mean, it works, but it, it's not perfect, right? So if we go to grass, let's use grass short. Um, you can just color this one green, for example. Let's just do a little planet zoo, um, planet zoo globe out of this one. Let's just do it that way. You can now create very nice things uh, with these tools. So you can see it's it's easy. It's kind of really easy to paint this in, in a certain color right now. Um, so here we go, done. And now you can again go back. Let's let's take the sand cause one and go back to one and see if we if we can kind of uh, create like yeah, you see this this works. So you know I've I've got a hundred percent now. You can just paint this. Sometimes you just need to somehow connect this, but yeah, well you, you get you know you get the idea. It's kind of working. I would need to just be a bit more uh, precise here, but well, it just kind of works now. It's not really the Planet Zoo one. It looks a little bit like a slime rock from uh, this one ghost Pokemon. You know, well, we can give it two eyes. Let's give it two eyes. Here you go. <laughs> oh man, that looks that looks weird. AF. Yeah, but as I said, you can also mix the textures. You can see now I'm mixing in with the green. We can also kind of go with the grass short again and just do something. We can also try to give it a little bit of a tongue here. Uh, Let's, ah, let's go to two. There we go. Maybe we can, yeah. It's not really that nice, but you know, yeah, you get the idea. You get the idea. You can do various things with it. Um, I think this is very fine to use it that way. Um, basically, this is all I can tell you about the terraforming because actually, um, you can do crazy things with it. And this is also why I chose this one. You can actually create stuff like that. It's, it's simple, um, yet powerful. You can see uh, I made this whole um, volcano thing in, in less than an hour and I just created this very quickly and very roughly. Um, again, this could be working way better than I did this over here. It's, it's nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, I would have, you know, I would have been able to smooth it out even more, but I wanted to have it like this rocky. So it's, it's really cool. You can create nice things um, with these options. This was like a little bit more for beginners. Um, but yeah, I hope this helped you again. And now I wish you a wonderful day and hope to catch you in the next one. Until then, have an awesome day and bye guys. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate that. As always, uh, make sure to check out also my social media channels. You can find me everywhere under at RudyRanCamel. Also, big thanks to the crew. Uh, you can see it on the left-hand side right now. And as always, if you want to see more, you click that card on the top right. And if you want to stick around because you like the stuff you've just saw, you just saw, whatever, you know what I mean. Just uh, click the sub button, which is to the bottom right of the screen right now. But everything else I can say is have a great time and see you next time. Bye, guys.